So you just got yourself a brand new reflex camera. But you look a little bit confused. These machines have a lot of features, a lot of comments and buttons that you don't know anything about. And this is totally normal. These cameras are professional equipment that can provide you with awesome quality pictures. But don't worry, this instructional film is going to teach you all there is to know about your new SLR camera. Let's have a look at the components of your camera. This is the lens and this is the shutter button. The advantage of a reflex camera is that the lens is interchangeable. You can now use another lens, just like here. On the top of the camera you have the rewind button the shutter speed selector, the advance and the frame counter. The reason we call them reflex cameras is the mirror here. The mirror deflects the light through the viewfinder. In that way and compared to external viewfinder cameras, what you see is what you get. Now let's talk about the shutter speed. The shutter speed is set here to the position 100. It's a fraction of a second. One hundredth of a second. That is really fast. Blink and you'll miss it. If we set it to 25, it is now 1 25th of a second. It's a little bit slower. And on the second stage is the slow shutter speeds. If it's set to this value here, now you won't miss it. Using a fast shutter speed will allow you to freeze movement, just like here. On the other hand, a slower shutter speed will bring a blurry movement, like that. And you might not want that on your pictures. The other setting on this camera is the aperture. The aperture acts like the iris from your eye. It's also called the iris on cameras. And it goes on like this. As you can see, the diaphragm inside the lens closes and opens, allowing more or less light to come in. The diaphragm also controls what we call the depth of field. You, we can have here a shallow depth of field or a wider depth of field. To achieve this, you simply have to use the correct aperture. A small F number means a wide aperture and a shallow depth of field. While a bigger number means a smaller aperture and a wider depth of field. Now that you know all of this, let's have a look at inside the camera. To open it, you will find a latch on the side. Once the camera is open, you can see here that we have the compartment where the film has to go. Modern day 35mm films come into canisters like this. This is the leader where you will attach the film. The film travels like this inside the camera. From the canister to the take-up spool. This is the shutter and you don't want to touch the shutter. You may damage it. This is finally the sprocket wheel that will control the advance of your film. The way you install the film is by bending the tip of the leader. If we wind up the camera a little bit, you'll see that the take-up spool has a slit. And the easy way to load the camera is to insert the bent tip of the leader inside the slit. And making sure that the sprocket wheels is matching the perforation of your film. And there we go. The film is now almost perfectly loaded. Now you want to select a shutter speed like a hundredth of a second, just like here, and you want to fire the shutter a few times and advance the film. On such a camera, three times is gonna be more than enough. Now the camera is ready to shoot. If your camera, just like here, doesn't have an automatic resetting frame counter, you have to set it to zero. Now you know how many pictures you have taken. 
And many cameras they have this type of film reminder, so you know which film you just inserted. Now let's talk about retaking your first images. You want to select the correct shutter speed and aperture combination to the situation. You can either use a handheld light meter like this, or to refer to these tables that are often provided with the film. You simply match the shutter speed with the ASA sensitivity of your film and adjust the aperture accordingly. For instance, this weather is cloudy, really cloudy, and it's pretty dark outside, so we're gonna use a shutter speed of 1 over 100 or 100th one of a second and an aperture of 5.6. And it will turn out real fine. Before taking the picture, we want to focus. One of the advantage of the reflex camera is the sheer fact that you can now see inside the viewfinder where it's gonna be focusing. You can definitely choose to focus on one part of the image or another. It's pretty easy and you just have to turn on the focusing ring. Now you're ready to take your first pictures and to enjoy photography. Once your film is finished, do not open the camera. Press the release button on the back and you have to rewind the film totally in its cartridge. Once the film is fully in the cartridge, you can drop it in at the photography shop to have it processed, to get your negatives and to enjoy your pictures. Photography is an awesome medium to document travel, family portraits or if you have an artistic side, try to get something a little more out of the ordinary. But anyways, enjoy your camera, enjoy photography, this is a really fun hobby. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.